Hey gang, it's JC and this is the Daily Dose for Friday, May 20th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We have archives at the top of the page, some great old television history, and of course, uh, your eye candy feature right along the bottom of the strip here, and we've just been joined by Dr. Kathy Naughton at the Center for Sexual Health, brand new feature, Sexually Speaking. you got to scroll down a little bit, and uh, we update that every Thursday and every Monday, and it's stories about sex and love and couples and surveys about sex and love and couples and everything. We update that twice a week and that's brand new and make sure you check out Dr. Kathy Naughton at the Center for Sexual Health. I'm laughing because the last thing I do right before I hit the record button is I glance at the date so that when I start rolling I know what the hell to say. And, uh, and oftentimes I look at it and I start rolling and I immediately forget the date. However, this is one of those dates that I just don't think I will or should for that frank for, for that matter, rather, frankly, uh, that I should ever forget because uh, it was 40 years ago today that I graduated from high school. 40 years ago today. I don't even know where to start, okay? So uh, my graduating class was 417 guys. I was buried somewhere right in the middle of all that. There were guys in my school who were so smart I couldn't even believe it. All boys Catholic high school all girls Catholic high school directly across the street. I don't even say a street. They basically had built a speed bump with a demilitarized zone of about 30 feet and then the girls school was right there. I mean you could pick up a rock and just fling it and you'd be on their property. And uh, you know during our lunch hours uh, in nice weather we would all go out on the parking lot of the school and all the girls would be on the parking lot of the other school and like I said there was like this 30 foot demilitarized zone and the boys were not allowed to have contact with the girls over there, and the girls couldn't come over here. We just had to, like, stand there and look at them. If my life seems screwed up, particularly as it relates to the things I say on the air about my relationship with women, maybe, just maybe, it all started there. I mean, the... the I understand what they were trying to do. They were trying to keep us focused on what we were supposed to do, and they didn't want people getting knocked up and having their lives ruined because you know, of all the stuff that happens when boys and girls get together. But you would have thought that they could have come up with a better idea and a better message, by the way, because it just made us want them. <laughs> it made us want them more. You know, if we were, if they were right there with us all the time, yeah, we'd be distracted and everything like that. But you can't just put them over there and, and say, there they are. You can't have them. You can't do that either. Um, I, I, I play ball. I, I lettered in baseball. Um, my in my in my high school yearbook, and I'll pull this out if you don't believe me. It's in my basement somewhere. Uh, I was voted most school spirit and best speaker. Now, the best speaker thing, you probably got that figured out. Because I was doing basketball play-by-play, -play, and they were showing the videotapes of the games to the study halls and stuff like that, and I got best speaker. The most school spirit thing, that's, that's a little different. Um, they didn't really know what to call me and what I was doing, so they gave me most school spirit. But really what it boiled down to was that I got off on the mobilization of large groups of people, particularly at sporting events. So it was at a time in Chicago where the bleacher bums, I don't know if you guys remember this from back in the late 60s, particularly 1969, uh, people wore these uh, yellow hard hats like construction workers and went to all the baseball games and sang and chanted and harassed uh, the... the uh, <laughs> and harassed the opposition. I still remember there was a, 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 a left fielder named Clarence Gaston, of course, you know, related to Cito Gaston. Uh, Clarence, and we used to sing, Clarence, let's see, um, let's see. <laughs> Clarence is a friend of mine, Clarence isn't married, Clarence goes out with the boys, Clarence is a fairy. So I, that's the sort of stuff we did. So I just applied all of that sort of stuff to uh, uh, my high school experience this is getting boring, isn't it? And, and we would just mobilize large groups of people that do stupid stuff and chant, and I had a bugle and, you know, played da 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 da, -da. <laughs> So they didn't know what to do, so they gave me best school spirit. It's, it's funny and embarrassing at the same time. But, you know, someday, Phil Donahue said this once, he said, someday I'm going to meet somebody who liked themselves in high school. So uh, it's just funny to think about right now. A couple of those Christian brothers, though, I'd like to look them up. I'd like to look them up and see if they're still alive so I could perhaps uh, um, 
let them suffer a little bit like like I suffered. I had a, I had a brother, Brother Lassick, who uh, I, I had disagreed with. He was in charge of the prom. And, and he was saying stuff and doing stuff. And I, I you know, after school one day, I went up to him. I was like, geez, you know, I, I don't know if this stuff is a good idea. A lot of the guys are saying they don't like this and blah, blah, blah. And I just went to him. And the guy wound up and just started with these haymakers with a closed fist, started beating me in the head and the face and the shoulders and just started beating the living crap after me. This was after school, by the way. A couple of the guys who were there who were watching it from a few feet away said that had it been them, they would have fought back. Of course, back then, if you would have done that, Oh, I don't even want to guess. I don't even want to guess. And I was about, uh, you know, two weeks from getting out of the school. And so I just figured, well, you know, I'll go back and I'll see. He's dead now. He's got to be dead. There's no way the guy could possibly be alive. He was, a, he was middle-aged then. But, uh, but I also had a very good time in high school. Like I said, I lettered in baseball, did a lot of exciting things. But uh, it's just odd to think about after all these years, 40 years ago today. I wonder if your experiences in high school were similar to mine. All right, let's uh, get to some of the news here. Patty Davis, Ronald Reagan's daughter, is, is dropping trow again. There she is. She's just, just something happens. There's some sort of a catharsis for her when she takes her clothes off and poses in, in magazines with her clothes off. It's just something she needs to do, apparently. Well, it looks like they got Lance Armstrong. 60 Minutes on Sunday night is going to uh, blow the lid off this whole thing. They ran some uh, excerpts from it on Katie Couric's Tearful Farewell on the CBS Evening News last night. It looks like they got him this time. Here's the uh, here's the guy who was a member of Lance's racing team, and he says, oh yeah, he says, I shot up, and Lance did too, and I saw it all the time. He did it all the time. I used to see the vials in his refrigerator. Uh, this is the real thing, and so now the question becomes, what happens in terms, you know, the Mark McGuire scandal was one thing. That affected the United States of America. That was bad enough. Uh, this, being that it's the Tour de France, and you know the equivalent almost of like an Olympic thing. Uh, this this goes around the world, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens. All right, Cardinals in Kansas City this weekend. Weather is supposed to be crap. Weather is supposed to be crap here, but I said it before. I'll say it again. I will take uh, rain and 82 over sunshine and 55 any day of the week. Bring on the rain. I don't even care anymore. Uh, and by the way, speaking of not caring anymore, maybe we shouldn't because according to that 89-year-old goofy preacher who uh, just started playing around with the Mayan calendar and everything and started adding and subtracting, and then he added his age and then subtracted the days of the week. And he comes up with the idea that tomorrow, Saturday, May 21st, is the last day of the world. That's going to be Judgment Day. Won't our faces be red if he turns, if he turns out to be right? But uh, he's just a crackpot. The world's not coming to an end. But it's got a lot of people thinking about a lot of things, um, including what would it be really like? I mean, what would it really be like if it was the end of the world, particularly if you knew that it was coming? How would you react? What would you do? There's a lot of movies, a lot of people talking about movies right now that have to do with the end of the world, like Armageddon. And there's, there's a, a dozen other movies that in some way, shape, or form uh, deal with the end of the world. And none of those lists that I have seen include the movie Last Night. Now, before you go running to your video store or your pay-per-view or your uh, whatever, Netflix, it's not Last Night, the movie that came out, I think it was last year, with Kira Knightley and Eva Mendez and people like that. That's not the one. This is a movie, and, and it's not about Last Night, the movie with Rob Lowe and Demi Moore and Jim Belushi. This is a 1998 movie out of Canada that starred Don McKellar and Sandra Oh, who you remember from, uh, I think she was in Grey's Anatomy, is that right? Also, uh, she was in Sideways. She's the Asian chick. And also Sarah Polly, who's been in a bunch of movies and stuff. And, and this is a very, very good movie. And, and it's, it's, it's very offbeat. Um, if, if you only see, you know, five, ten movies a year, then maybe you won't sort of have an appreciation for this movie. And I don't mean to insult you uh, uh, who, if you only see five, ten movies a year. But this is a movie for experienced filmgoers. Somebody who can really sort of see a movie that doesn't have a lot of car chases and explosions and stuff like that, um, but, it, but can really hold your attention. And it, it's actually listed in some places as a comedy. And it's not much of a comedy, although there's a lot of very, very dark very black humor in this movie because of the subject matter. Obviously, the world's coming to an end. How would people react? And this is, I think, a startlingly, startlingly accurate depiction of what it would be like. 
They even make reference to the fact that when the initial announcement was made, a lot of people just killed themselves and there was rioting in the streets and all this sort of stuff. And now this deals with the people who stuck it out, if you will, and are, are going to be there right till the very, very end when the world comes to an end. I, the other thing I love about this movie is they never make any reference to why the world is coming to an end. Uh, they only know that there is an, a, an absolute specific time when it's going to happen. And it's been confirmed by everybody, all the scientists, the government, world leaders, etc. and so forth. They know the exact second when the world is coming to an end. And so different people react differently. Some people have sort of a, uh, uh, an oddly comedic view of the world coming to an end. Some people go into deep, dark depression. Some people try to get their lives in order. It, this is a this is an amazing movie. I've shown this to people, uh, girlfriends, stuff like that. And at the end of the movie, they go, I hated that movie. And, and I can understand some people hate the movie, but I can also understand you liking it. It gets very good remarks uh, and very good reviews if you go online and look. And, uh, uh, and it's really something to think about. So again, the movie is called Last Night, came out in 1998. Uh, Don McKellar, Sandra O, oh, Sarah Polly, and if you can find a copy of it, it's, it's, it really will shake you up. I saw this movie when it came out, well, this is what, 13 years ago. I still think about this movie all the time. And that's very, very rare. Because most movies, I see them, you know, you're there for two hours, you watch the movie, you walk out, and if you think about it again, so maybe somebody brings it up because of the the director or the star who's in it or something like that, but to actually thinking about the issue of what you would do if you only had a couple of weeks left, you knew that everything was coming to an end. And uh, I mean, we had all sorts of discussion earlier this week about the fact that apparently there's this test now, it's like a blood test or something, and based on family history and stuff in your blood and all this sort of stuff for $700, not available in the United States yet, but th they, they say they're able to tell you how long you're gonna live. Now, whether or not the thing's accurate, it's highly doubtful, and there's also a span of like five years either way. Well, that's 10 years. That doesn't really help. But probably someday science is going to be able to tell you within a couple of months how long you're going to live, unless you're hit by a bus or something like that. This gets very, very complicated. So, uh, Dave Murray says, this summer in St. Louis will not be a typical summer. Not a lot of, you know, 100 plus temperatures and stifling heat and humidity. It's going to be hot. It's going to be summer, but it's not going to be one of those years sort of like we had last year where it was like, oh my God. So we'll talk more about with him uh, later. Justin Timberlake, Lady Gaga on the season ending episode of Saturday Night Live over the weekend. And everybody looking forward to Monday night when HBO presents Too Big to Fail about the big Wall Street collapse and scandal. you got William Hurt in the movie. You've got Paul Giamatti playing Paul, uh, 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 Ben Bernanke. And that's on Monday night. Can't wait to see that on HBO. All right, it's the weekend, and we got the Memorial Day weekend coming up next week. So how can you not be in a good mood? Temperature's warming up. Ah, the rain. You know, you can do stuff in the rain. So I thought we'd put something up that's really sort of pointless and stupid on our eye candy today. And I know, I, I know what you're going to say here, because the internet is full of, and YouTube is full of talking dog videos, okay? But this one is really, really good. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sell you on this if I didn't. I sat there and I laughed my ass off when I saw that. It's about three minutes long. Talking dog, eye candy. Check out the video today on JC's eye candy feature. All right, that's it. Have a great weekend, everybody. That's it. JC's Daily Dose for Friday, May 20th, 2011. It was 40 years ago today that I went from here to here with the tassel, you know. Uh, in the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.